believers say the truth is out there, but uh, if this is the kind of stuff they're hiding at Area 51, the truth can stay out there. So much for little green men, it's Area 51 for the PlayStation 2. Now this Area 51 has almost nothing in common with the 1995 arcade shooter of the same name, and that's a good thing. This isn't some crappy pre-rendered light gun game, and I emphasize the differences in quality even more than those in genre. Despite a few flaws, this is one of the PS2's coolest first-person shooters. Of course, Area 51 was also released for the original Xbox, but the game made a much bigger splash on Sony's system. Frankly, games like this were more common on the Xbox, a shooter-heavy console which also happened to be the generation's most powerful. But on the PS2, Area 51 was a striking release in 2005. There are nice particle effects, great lighting, detailed textures, this kind of stuff really made Midway's games stand out on the PS2. And so does the story, in a well-presented, yet incomprehensible kind of way. Area 51 tells the story of Ethan Cole, a hazmat trooper sent in to do some cleanup work at the United States' mysterious military installation, Area 51. As you might expect, given the location of his assignment, Cole finds a mess unlike anything he'd ever encountered before. But from there, the story takes some seriously bizarre twists that are almost impossible to follow. But as they did for the game's graphics, Midway spared no expense for the storytelling. Cole is voiced by none other than Fox Mulder himself, the X-Files actor David Duchovny. His deadpan delivery adds a lot to Area 51, and most importantly, he gives the game a decidedly X-Files feel. With the protocols at work, that the virus was contained. I mean, come on, you're shooting monsters, there are alien fetuses in green jars, and the main character sounds like Fox Mulder. I mean, without getting the actual license, this is as close as you can get to making an X-Files shooter, and maybe I'm just being cynical here, but I'm guessing that was the intent. The only thing Area 51 is missing is a sexy ginger. And I'm, I'm talking about Gillian Anderson here, not myself. Although, for future reference to any game developers out there, I work for cheap. Less cheap than I, however, is the game's exhilarating gameplay, and that's where you get abducted by Area 51. Creatures of earthly, alien, and other descent attack you from virtually every angle. The weapons feel great, and the shooting handles extremely well. This is a very satisfying game to play, and the mood created by those graphics really set the perfect tone. Of course, we have to send another thank you to Mohammed from Qatar, uh, who sent us this in a huge freaking box of games that we'll be getting to over the next few days here on Undertow. Uh, well played, sir, because Area 51 is Area 50 awesome. In fact, I gotta tell you, if you like shooters or a little science fiction in your games, this one's an easy recommendation. Now, it's not quite an upper echelon console shooter, but if it had Dana Scully, it might be. That's how enjoyable this game is, the tense and beautiful, if regrettably gingerless, Area 51.